In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, Alleluia. Your face, Lord, do I seek, hide not your face from me. salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie, Kyrie, For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the seventh Sunday of Easter is written in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 36. Therefore say to the house of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I'm going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. 
I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people, and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 4. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, Do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia. 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 God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. I will not leave you as orphans. I am going away and I will come to you and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and the 16th chapters. Glory. 
When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Praise Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In this world, you will have trouble, hardships. Jesus says so. And he says that. He warns you of it today so that when it comes, you will not fall away. For Jesus knows that the troubles of this world have a tendency to choke out faith. He said that too. When a job is lost, when the diagnosis is dire, when your prayer is not heard as you would have it answered, when the loved one dies too soon or too suddenly, Have you not then doubted the Lord and his care for you? 
Have you never wavered? Never fallen away? Have you never been blinded or confused or scandalized by the lies the world tells about these hardships? You see, the world tells a tempting story about this hardship and what it means and what it wants you to believe. It might seem like a convincing tale at first, but look closely and you will see that it is all lies. For the world has things backwards. As Jesus says, the world even thinks it's doing God a favor, a divine service, when it kills his Christians. And if the world gets this wrong, is it any wonder that it gets so much else wrong as well? The world would tell you, for example, that your worth is determined by how much you make rather than by how much you love you show or the love you are shown. The world, by means of its scriptures, the media, whether it's social or mainstream, tells our young people that, that rather than the mysterious union of husband and wife for the procreation of children, God's gift of our bodies and sex is really just a toy, something to use as we wish. Or instead of seeing our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. The world would have us think that we're really nothing more than animals with clothes on. The world tells husbands to abandon wife and children if it suits him. The world tells mothers that they may abandon their children even if they reside in their own womb. Those are just big-ticket items that prove beyond any doubt that the world really is crazy. It's crazy, though, because it's broken down with sin. The problem is that world resides in each one of us as well. And though we might well thank God that we have, by his grace, avoided some of these obviously worldly sins You and I still have reason every Sunday to strike our chest and to pray, have mercy on me, a sinner. Because make no mistake, our Lord says that cruel words against your neighbor are just as murderous as abortion. And lustful thoughts are just as adulterous as abandoning your spouse for another. And the love of money, the root of all evil, is our real national pastime. And so our Lord calls us to repent. Jesus tells us what will happen to those who are called by his name. He says they will put you out of the synagogue. In other words, the world will reject you. So what? Fine. Then leave the synagogues of the world and don't worry what the world thinks of you. In fact, when the world kicks you around, when hardships of all sorts come, when friends despise or forsake you, rejoice. Rejoice, because in each of these hardships, the Lord is teaching you to leave the synagogues of the world, calling you out of the nations of the world, for they are not your home. In each of these hardships, the Lord wants to remind you not to get too comfortable here. Your citizenship is in heaven. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. You see, the world will mock you for following a God who goes and gets himself killed on a cross. And the world will think you are nuts for believing that the almighty God of the universe delights to be called your father and even counts the very hairs of your head. And yes, the world will even call itself kind and you cruel if you dare to say that salvation is found only in Jesus Christ. But to hell with the world. To hell with its madness and cruelty and so-called wisdom. To hell with the sin that is at the root of it. 
For that is, in fact, what Jesus, exactly what Jesus came to do. To take all the junk of the world down to hell and leave it there. For he came to take away the sins of the world. Jesus came to bear in his body all your fears, all your alliances with the sinful world, all your cruelties, all your lies, all your brokenness and sin. He came to bear it all that he might take it down to hell in his death. And that's the wisdom of God. That's how God saves you and all the world. He paid no attention to the world's wisdom and did not care that it called him a fool. He let the world do its worst to him so that it might never do its worst to you. For our Lord Jesus took all the sins of the world down to hell and left them there by rising from the dead. Sin and hell and death now have no mastery over you because it has no mastery over him. And you are in him, in Christ, by the power of the helper, the counselor, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He has drowned you in the watery hell of baptism and left your sins at the bottom of the font while he draws you forth to new life. For in your baptism you are plunged into Christ's death and resurrection. These realities are now real for you. You are forgiven and free. You are the baptized child of God. You are risen from the dead. And so this world can't touch you. Its threats are meaningless. The devil, the world, the flesh may prowl around like a roaring lion seeking whom they may devour. But for those who are in Christ, all the devil can do is roar. For he's had his teeth and his claws pulled out. So don't be afraid when hardship comes. Don't think for a moment that your heavenly Father has abandoned you, for he loves you and has saved you for his own name's sake. And he has gathered you out of the nations of the world, out of the world's synagogues, to be his holy church, the spotless bride of Christ, washed clean in the waters of baptism, flowing from the spear-pierced side of her husband. He has replaced your stony hearts with a heart of flesh and has breathed into you a new spirit. Though your heart and your flesh are corrupt, he gives you the incorruptible body of Christ for your food and fills you with the blood that the heart of Christ himself pumps. Though your spirit was foul and twisted, he has filled you with his spirit in baptism. And indeed, he breathes his sweet breath of the Spirit over you again and again as you come to receive holy absolution. The Lord always has a gift to give. And you have come to the right place to receive them. For here, in his holy church, the Lord offers to you all that he has for he offers to you all that he is. The Lord is your strength, your life, and your light. And he's here again to fill you with his forgiveness, mercy, and love. That's what church is for. That's what the divine service is. It is the Lord's service to you. That service to you was performed on the cross. But now, what Jesus did on the cross, his divine service, is delivered to you here as his divine service comes to you personally. As he gives you the very fruits of his cross in his body and blood. This is real reality. 
And this is where everything is set right and square. And where all the madness and the lies of the world are held at bay. Or where Christ, the God-man, is. There is your home. There is your peace, your comfort, your joy in all hardships, your key to eternal life, and your promise of the resurrection. Amen. Please. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join now in confessing the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father.
Please stand for prayer. Lord of hosts, your Son, Jesus Christ, our King of glory, now stands with you, uplifted in triumph far above the heavens. Leave us not without consolation, but send us always the spirit of your truth according to his promises. Gracious Lord, strengthen your holy church to bear witness to your Son, to bear persecution, and to live in the confidence that if you are for us, nothing can separate us from you. Strengthen the ministers of your holy church, Send laborers into your harvest and sustain those you have sent. Heavenly Father, preserve and bless all Christian households, that husbands and wives would live in love and service to each other, that fathers and mothers would diligently bring up their children in your fear, and that children would honor their parents and be well equipped for service to their neighbors in this life. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this nation. Grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to mind the sacrifices of those who served faithfully until death in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our land. Compassionate Lord, praising your son's resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Graciously receive our prayers for the sake of Christ's eternal intercession on our behalf. Lord God, since your Son has ascended on high and is seated at the right hand of your majesty, comfort your church. Assure us that as he, has, he fills all things, so in his supper he is surely present with us according to his promise for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that through your Holy Spirit you have appointed us to bear witness to your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Since the world cannot endure this testimony and persecutes us in every way, encourage and comfort us. We implore you that we would not be offended by these crosses, but continue steadfast in your testimony and be found always among those who know you and your Son until we obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his resurrection appeared openly to all his disciples and in their sight was taken up to heaven that he might make us partakers of his divine nature. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Almighty God, endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. Out of love you created us and everything which exists. 
In mercy, you preserved the church in Noah's day with a flood. In grace, you promised to bless us through Abraham's seed. With patience, you protected that seed through the judges and kings of Israel. In faithfulness, you repeated your promises through the prophets. And when the time had fully come, you sent your son, born of a woman, born under law to redeem those under law, with a perfect and sufficient sacrifice, which paid the price for the sins of the entire world. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious Lord, we bow before you in thankfulness for your many and varied gifts, for Christ's redemptive death, his victorious resurrection, his ascension promises, and his powerful reign at your right hand. Bolstered by your endless grace and Pentecost spirit, we eagerly await his glorious return. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
O God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.